losing battery. All right, so we are in the shop. It is nighttime. And let's discuss this rust problem that the S14 has. So basically the driver's side front strut tower of the S14 is completely rusted out. No way to fix it. Like, well, you could fix it with sheet metal and stuff. It would just be very difficult. The passenger side one is good structurally. It's pretty much in good shape. It just has a few little rust patches. So those have to get fixed. And I have the items here to fix them. I did uh, purchase them with the vehicle. The gentleman had it because he planned on uh, fixing it. So this is the driver side strut tower. It is not in perfect condition. It is in good enough condition, much better condition than the one in the car. So I will do that. And then this is the passenger side one. Also in pretty decent condition, but nothing to write home about. I mean, remember these cars are from the mid 90s, so they're kind of old now. So yeah, that is what is required for me to fix this stuff. Uh, what I'm basically going to do is cut those items out you know drill out the spot welds cut them do whatever i need and then replace the factory ones with it now i'm only going to do that after i pull the factory motor so let's take a quick second and talk about motors so as far as motors are concerned in an s14 there are very many options uh, what's in the car right now is the factory dual cam k24 now the K24 is, it, it's an okay motor, especially once you turbocharge them and stuff like that. But uh, honestly, don't want to run it. Don't like it, want something cooler. Uh, it is an automatic car, so it, even if I were to run the K24, I would do a manual conversion, of course, but I'm not gonna run a KA. Um, I'm not interested, it's no fun to me. Uh, the next possible swap would be an SR20, and SR20s are good. Honestly, uh, I would recommend them, if anything. They're uh, good motors, you know, they can make power pretty well, upgraded turbos, get stuff from ISR, uh, you know, like even the cheap stuff works great on them. Uh, a lot of people throw in like Tomei Pond cams and make, you know, over three, you'll do like 330 horsepower, like pretty easily on them, and that's like good power. Uh, and they're economical. An SR20 is cheap to swap in. Like, you gotta love that. It, it fits, it belongs in the car. It just fits in. You dump it in, it's perfect. It works fine. Um, the next possibility is an RB, like RB20, RB25, not RB26. They are insanely expensive, like, no way. But, you know, maybe an RB25, something like that. But to be quite honest, I don't like RB25s. I think they make a great sound. Um, they, they certainly can make power, uh, but I, I don't know. I don't see them done very well, and I don't know if I'm going to be the guy who changes the, you know, the world. Jesse has an RB25 in his S13, and it's actually been fairly reliable for him. Like, it, it has yet to leave him stranded, but it does leak more oil than you can ever imagine. Um, it tends to overheat, you know, things, things that I'm just not interested in. I don't like that stuff. I like the sound, but an RB wouldn't be the way to go. And I think with RB20s especially, parts availability is, is very slim. Uh, and that's the thing, I'm not trying to order overnight parts from Japan or whatever, it's, it's not happening. So uh, RB25, uh, very unlikely, most unlikely swap yet. Um, and sort of in that same vein, the, uh, the straight six turbo vein is a uh, one or two JZ engines. Now these are, I mean, just great motors. I mean, every, everybody, how many, uh, I'm pretty sure that's the uh, YouTube car guy go-to motor, right? Is you just throw a 2J in it because you don't want to, uh, you don't want to upset the JDM fanboys. You gotta, gotta stay mad JDM so you keep a 2J in it. But to be fair, 2JZ engines are very, very good. And they can be had for a relatively cheap price. Um, nothing, you know, like not, not crazy cheap, not a couple hundred bucks. They're still in the thousands, but like, they're not, you know, you're not talking about like E39 M5 V8 pricing or anything. Like it's, it's, you know, pretty economical. The problem that you run into with the Jay-Z is generally speaking as a transmission setup. 
because R154 is the normal five speed that you would go with, uh, is getting rarer and rarer and rarer. Uh, and people are starting to ask around that $2,000, $2,500 mark for them. So even if you could get a motor for $1,500 to $1,800, uh, the transmission is just very expensive, $2,500 for a trans. Um, so that is, that, that's a drawback. Uh, the other drawbacks to a Jay-Z engine are if you want to upgrade power because it's a turbo engine, uh, you have to upgrade injectors. You have to, not all the time, but you know, if you're, especially if you're going big power, you got to do a turbo conversion, manifold conversion. You got to do a bunch of things like that. You need to get an aftermarket ECU. A lot of people like the AEM, uh, me included. I think AEM makes great products, but there's plenty of other options out there. Um, the, uh, I think if I went Jay-Z, I would actually probably go one Jay-Z. And uh, I know a lot of people are like, if you're going to go one Jay-Z, just go two Jay-Z, bro. And you're right. But um, I, I think that the one Jay-Z is just a hair more uh, economical. I'd go with the VVTi 1J if I did, because it has a little bit better mid-range power than the non-VVTi one. Um, it comes single turbo from the factory. I kind of like that. And I think guys push around 380 horsepower with all the factory stuff on a uh, on VVTi 1JZs. I, I, don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. But I think it's around there, which is uh, like 380 wheel horsepower is like good power. Like you'll, you'll move some tire with that. Uh, so yeah, that is, that is something I'm interested in. I have returned. So... Back on to Jay-Z's. Uh, yeah, one Jay-Z. I like it. Um, parts availability for the Jay-Z is uh, not so bad. We had them in the US domestic market. Um, in Supras, of course, is known to have the two Jays. But we also had naturally aspirated two Jays and a bunch of Lexuses. Uh, Lexuses? Lexuses? Le Lexi? What, what, whatever the pur plural for a Lexus is. Um, we, we had the... Uh, 2JZ GE, the naturally aspirated 2Js here. So parts like, you know, alternators, water pumps, power steering pumps, they exist here. So that's good. It's, be it's better than having to import something. Um, the next possible option, which is an option I actually like, is a VQ35. There's not a lot of swap stuff on VQ35s, but I mean, they're great motors as far as I can tell. Um, the one I have in my 350Z, because the car's an 04, it's a uh, VQ35DE, the first generation of uh, VQ35s here, here in the States at least. I don't know if they had them earlier overseas, but uh, the motor is honestly like really, really good. It, uh, it's been dead reliable for me. Uh, I mean, it's fast. It goes like stink. And I don't know. It's, it's torquey. It feels, it feels right. You know what I mean? It feels right. I like the uh, I like the VQ35. It has uh, a lot of aftermarket support, but there is a barrier there. It's one of those motors where if you want to do a lot of power, you have to build it. Like when I say build it, most of the time you're talking about rods and pistons because the rods are known to be weak in them, and I feel like Nissans in general tend to break ringlands. So you're talking about rods and pistons and while you're in there you do bearings and you know ARP bolts and everything else so VQ35 good motor uh, good transmission from the factory the CD transmission whether it be a CD001 CD005 CD009 what, whatever your flavor of CD is um, they're all pretty good uh, it's a six speed it takes a lot of torque so um, that is a benefit of the VQ35, that the transmission option is good from the factory. Uh, now, another motor like that, the last possible option is a Chevy LS1 or anything in the small, Generation 3 small block Chevy family, which are LS variants. So that could be anything from the actual LS, like an LS1 or an LS2, um, LS3 is Gen 4. Uh, or, you know, the truck motors, LM7, LQ4, LQ9, uh, there's a million other ones. There's like the uh, aluminum 5.3, which is the L33. There's, there's a ton of them. There's a ton of various, uh, you know, Gen 3 small block Chevy options. And they're good. They're good options. Their problem 
uh, like the 2J, is transmissions. So you can go out and pick up a 5.3 iron block for 500 bucks. I mean, that's actually a, a good price these days. They're usually more like 650. Um, the one that I put in the FC was $650 delivered to the door. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. Um, and they're great other than transmission pricing. T56s used to go for anywhere between $1,300 and $1,500. They were, they were pretty, pretty stuffed in there. Uh, but now T56s are getting incredibly expensive. They're about $2,000, $2,500. If you find one for under $2,000, it would be a miracle. Um, what a T56 is, is the six speed that came in, well, it came in everything, but the one that we're talking about is an F body T56 which means it was a T56 that came in a 1998 to 2002 Chevy Camaro or Firebird with the 5.7 liter V8. Now they do have T56s and things like Cadillac CTSVs. Uh, I think Pontiac G8s might have had them. Uh, Pontiac GTOs had them. Uh, even Corvettes have them. They're just mounted in the rear of the car. So a T56 is, a, is actually a super common transmission, but they're very expensive, very sought after. They're, they're getting so expensive that it's almost worth just getting a built transmission from somewhere. Like, like you're not spending that much more money for a dog box these days. I, I've seen T56s as expensive as $3,500, and that's like laughable. Um, so the LS motors are good. Uh, they you know have tons of parts availability. If there's something broken, you can get a new part from AutoZone today or some parts store today. So that's like a very good option, but the transmission kills you. So all of these motors have their pluses and drawbacks. You know, they're economical, but then they're limited on power. They have uh, great transmission options, but then it's really hard to uh, get motor upgrades for them or upgrade the motor very far. You know, if it's got a good, reliable motor, then you know you got no transmission or the transmission is going to cost you three times more than the motor or you know if it makes good power just there's you know there's no, no way to upgrade it from stocks things like that so they're all options um and soon i guess you will find out what i decide to go with but for now that's all